Okay, so welcome back again to the E section of program. This is the fifth lecture in this uh, module one. So let me recall some of the things what we have done. So in the last we, uh, lecture, we were uh, talking about the solvability of this equation z power n equal to z naught. This is much more general than the equation we set out to solve z square equal to minus 1 because z naught is a complex number and this complex number system gives the solvability of that. So what we have done is that if z naught is uh, in C, z naught is equal to r naught e power i theta naught, oh, this is the polar coordinate form and we are looking for a solution also in the polar coordinate form. So that means we have to find r and theta such that if you substitute that will give you this equation r e power i theta by power n is equal to r naught e power i theta naught. So that means now if you apply your Demover's theorem which we have stated this will be r power n into cos n theta is equal to this one. So if you expand now this is e power, uh, cos theta naught plus i psi n naught naturally r equal to r naught power 1 over n and n theta equal to theta naught or theta equal to theta naught on by n. So you get one solution, one solution you get of this equation z power n equal to z naught is r naught power 1 over n cos theta naught uh, this is equal to is a solution of this one. So you got one solution. Then we immediately realize an important property of e power i theta that means e power i theta is periodic with period 2k pi where k is an integer, an integer. So you choose any k equal to 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 etc. If you substitute you get it. That means this is a e power i theta is a periodic function with period 2i 2k pi i. So with this hint we produced n solutions. So if you uh, take this r naught power 1 over n cos theta naught plus o k by by n plus i that in other words r naught power 1 over n e power i into theta naught plus 1. So when you get k equal to 0 you get back your solution this one a k equal to 1, 2, 3 up to n minus 1 you get a total set of n solution. So you may wonder that what happens to if I put k equal to n, n plus 1 etc or if I put k equal to minus 1 etc. You do not produce anything new. So for this set of values k equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, n minus 1 you get n distinct solutions for this equation and these are given by that one and when substitute any other k you come back again. For example, if I put k equal to n this again will be uh, be due to the periodicity this will be nothing but k equal to 0 both will be the same and you have n solutions. So that is how we have solved. So let us see a particular case now and I will complete this in particular case z not equal to minus 1 or z not equal to 1. So that is what the uh, 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 nth roots of unit we call it nth roots of unit. That means you want to find, uh, you already know that one, I want to give you the solutions of z power n equal to 1. And z naught is a, uh, one is a special case of z naught. So in this case what we will get it? In this case, so if you look at here, one will be here. So you have no angle. In this case your theta naught equal to 0. So you have no angle. So if you sub, uh, if you so if you substitute this equation, you are, what are all your n roots? One when k equal to zero, theta naught is equal to zero in that special case. So when k equal to zero, you get cos zero. You get only this one. and r naught is equal to one. Theta naught equal to zero and your r naught is equal to one. So you get one solution and then you will get i two pi by n. The next solution is that's what you will get it i theta is equal to 0 when n equal to 1. So you will get theta equal to 1, you will get 2 pi by n, okay. And then e power 2 into i 2 pi by n like that, if you get it n roots n minus 1 i 2 pi by n. So if I call this equal to, so let put, uh, put, there is a very special notation omega equal to e i 2 pi by n. If I put this one, this is nothing but omega square. 
Next is omega q. This is equal to omega per 1. Therefore, our, all nth roots of unity, all nth roots of unity, roots of unity are given by 1 omega, omega square, etc. omega power n minus 1 with omega equal to this one. So, these are the 1th root of unity. Here, so you got all this. This is a special case. So, it is an interesting exercise for you. Exercise here, find all nth roots of z power n equal to minus 1 and also find all the nth roots of z power that is easy z power n equal to a with a positive so you have instead of 1 you have an a so you get all the nth roots of unity are nth root of a because a is a real number so it has one positive real root and all omega power k k equal to 0 to n minus 1 so you get all the nth roots here also you can put it z power n equal to minus minus. So, one more final feature before I complete this proof and goes to other important aspects of your complex analysis. So, next case, uh, where are we doing it? So, looking for a solution of z power n. So, taking modulus, what we will get it? Taking modulus, this we can do it here also, but let us me do it for the very simple case. So, taking modulus, you will get mod z power n is equal to 1. But mod z power n is same as mod z power n. That is equal to 1. That implies mod z equal to 1. So, what does this imply? So, mod z power n. So, if you have a solution, all these solutions are lying on the unit circle. So, you see, this is all these roots omega. So, if you have your root here, say for example, uh, so if you have your uh, one root here, say your uh, first uh, root is here, suppose you are finding omega is here, then omega here, 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 next omega here. So, equally it goes. So, this is the, actually this is omega square, this is omega q, this is omega power 4, this is omega power 5, this is omega power 6, this is omega power 7 and this is nothing but omega power 8, this is same as omega power 0, you see. So, these are all the nth roots of 8, 8th roots or not 8, 8th roots of unity. So, if you have, so, uh, so if you have square root of unity, so if you have square root of unity, you get to, uh, so if you want to find the square root of 1, so you have two roots, one here, one here. If you are looking at z cube equal to 1, you will have uh, 1 here. So, if you have 1 here, 1 here and 1 here. So, you get 3. If you have nth roots of 4th uh, roots of unity, you will get 1 here and you get 1 here, 1 here and 1 here and 1 here. Uh, that way you will get all that. So, all the nth root of unity lies on the unit circle. That is why it is called the nth roots of unity. So, this completes one part of my lectures. So, let us now go to another important aspects of complex analysis. So, let me have a clean board first and then we will go to the next analysis. So, let me keep it everything. Okay, so welcome back again. So, what we have seen now, I am going to introduce something, a new concept. So far, you have a C, C together with some algebraic concepts, algebraic concepts, 
what are the algebraic concepts addition multiplication etc and we have seen various properties of this thing now we are going to do an another property what is called as geometrical property geometrical i will not elaborate on this way but this in modern terminology this is also called topological concepts topological concepts you may think that is a new terminology or a new word but do not worry uh, about it but what i am basically what i am going to do is what we call it a convergence of complex numbers convergence of this is what the thing in next few minutes i am going to introduce in this process what we need is a concept of a distance so we will have a concept of a distance so if you have a complex plane see and suppose you have two points z1 and z2 and then i have a distance between this one so i can be two complex numbers that is nothing but modulus of z1 minus z2 you see you know that this distance that is how it is defined so if you go back to your analytical geometry or other things in terms of x and y so if i represent z1 is equal to x plus i y1 and z2 is equal to x plus i y2 you can see that this is nothing but the square root of x1 minus x2 square plus y1 minus y2 square so uh, uh, so you have uh, you need this concept of so once you have a concept of distance you can talk about the closeness neighborhoods so you can uh, think how close a person how close a point is to another point so this is what the geometry comes into picture i can say that this point is close to me or that point is this much close to me so this gives you a, uh, a what we call it a uh, these are the various terminologies i uh, but it is nice to know such a terminologies except and this leads to what are called open and closed sets though i am not going to define here i will uh, it is, this is what leads to the modern concept of topology okay but we will not do it here but then i want to do the, what is the meaning of a convergence of complex numbers so in this this i want to define some few things what is called an open disk suppose you have a point so i'll define b z not r is the set of let me first define the point and then i will explain three sets i am going to define and then I, this is set of all z in c such that mod z minus z not less than r and then i will define b bar of z not r is equal to set of all z in c such that mod z minus z not less than or equal to r and as a last set s z not of r is equal to set of all z in c such that mod z minus z not equal to r so if you have seen this you have already seen what is mod z minus z not that means the distance from z not to z is a constant so that means it's a circle so we have your complex number system and if you have your z not here this set yes is nothing but the circle and this is your r and b these are all set of points inside and this is the set of points inside together with the set of points of the circle and the last one is the set of points on the circle so this is precisely the circle so this is open because there is no points on the circle this includes the points on the circle so <coughs> so this is called the closed disk 
In fact, this is called an open disc with the center Z0 and radius R. This is a closed disc with the center Z0 and radius R and this is the circle. Okay. This is the circle with the center Z0. So, definitely your B bar, so your B bar is nothing but B union S. Of course, these two are disjoint union. So, this is the disjoint union also. This is we call it an interior. This we call it a boundary which is the circle and this includes both your interior and the boundary points. And so, that way you have three terminologies. So, this is what the leads to what we call important concepts like open and closed sets. Though I do not want to say that uh, and leading to what are called the topological or geometrical concepts. And any set together with an algebraic concept and geometrical concepts provide a good platform for applications. Okay? That is how you work out things. Okay? And in fact, these two, so if you given a just a set, that may not be much useful, but set given with a geometrical concept together with the topological uh, geometrical concept together with algebraic concept is a potent weapon for applications. And uh, so with this we give now the convergence of two sets. Okay? So you have already have an intuitive idea of convergence. What does that mean a convergence? So if you have a, a sequence, suppose a definition. So let me tell you first definition and then we will go back to the convergence. Let Zn, this is a, is a contained in C, be a sequence, be a sequence in C, then keep this definition, I will interpret to you. We say Zn converges to a point, converges to a point Z0 in C if for given epsilon, given epsilon positive, there is an N, there is an N such that modulus of x, uh, I am using z, modulus of zn minus z0 less than or equal to epsilon for all n greater than or equal to a. So, let us call your intuitive motivation, what this definition tells you. You have a sequence, you have a point z0, and you may have a sequence z1, z2, z3, etc. So, you may have a sequence like this. What does this intuitively means that initially z1, z2, etc. will may not be close to z0, but eventually you want every point will be close to its neighborhood and if possible as close to z0 as possible. So, you are prescribing an error how close it should be and that is what this epsilon thing. So, if I say that I need to be, so if I say that I need to be a, a, a epsilon, that means I am putting a radius epsilon here. And what my demand is that if a sequence converges to Z0, it is, starts from here, somewhere it may go, but eventually after some time it reaches and it remains here. So, it may be the sequence may be coming, it may remain outside for as long as it may not immediately come, but eventually come. Even if I choose a smaller epsilon, then after some time this n may change, but it will come to that. That is what the convergence means and this is the very precise definition of the convergence. So, you have to understand that. Keep that given epsilon there is an n. That is what it will tell you. So, epsilon means you are putting an error, how close 
you want your sequence of numbers uh, uh, or how you how close ZN should be set not so once you prescribe what it says that there is an n after that it will belongs to that one so look at the, the examples there are plenty of examples you can give look at the examples suppose I take ZN I take a point uh, uh, 1 over n I take Z equal to 1 over n this is a real number all this you prove it Zn equal to this converges to 0. Okay, you can see this is also a three type. So if I take these are all already you have seen. If I take this by n, when n equal to so what is this sequence? This sequence is first when n equal to 1, you get minus 1, then n equal to 2, I get 1 by 2, when n equal to 3, I'll get minus 1, 3, and then I will get 1 by 4, etc. So, you get a sequence of numbers and this also goes to 0. So, you see, so you have a sequence of numbers goes to 0. But if I uh, uh, take a sequence 3, if I take a sequence 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, this etc. does not go to 0. So, if I choose with respect to uh, Z0, if I take Z0 as Zn equal to Z0, plus 1 over n, then it will go to z naught. It will convert, does not convert, this does not convert. Convert. Okay. If I take z naught, I can put it in, in whatever way that z naught plus i over n, then this also converges to z naught. Okay. So, if I take another sequence, I can have another sequence, e power z n equal to e power i theta by n. What is what is happening theta by n? So, I have a sequence, this is uh, here, this will be in the unit circle. So, I get this is when 1 equal to 1, it will be here, then it will be here, it will be here, it will be here and it will goes to 0. So, this will convert just to 1. But then, this is an interesting sequence, z n is equal to e power i n theta. What will happen to this sequence? What will happen to this sequence? So, I will uh, this example if I take it, uh, these are all in the unit circle because modulus of Zn is equal to 1. Whenever you have any, any sequence e power i theta modulus of Zn equal to 1 because this is cos n theta plus i sin n theta. So, it is its modulus is cos square n theta plus sin square n theta which is 1, it is square root. So, what will happen to this one? If I start with 1, I will have a eta here. Then if I take second thing, it will be here. Third, this is 2i theta, 3 theta, it may be something like that. It may keep on going, it will keep on, it may reach here, it may reach here. You do not know where it will reach, but with the same angle it will keep on rotating. So, it will never convert, does not convert. Okay. That is a very interesting thing, but I want you to give an exercise, you should go and see this exercise. Very interesting thing, I want you to go and see. What you do is that, I can write since theta is arbitrary. I can write theta, write theta is equal to. The thing is that when I rotate it, I want to know whether it is keep on rotating. So, I want to know at some point of time, it will come back to one of the original points. That is an interesting question. So, I will start from here, it will go here, it may keep on going, it may keep on going. So, I want to know at some point of time, it will come back to my initial point. Uh, that is an interesting question to know. So, for this the exercise is the right is equal to 2 pi alpha. Since uh, theta is between 0 and 2 pi, alpha will be between 0 and 1. So, study, so the exercise is study uh, the sequences, study the sequences 
in two cases one study the sequences z e power i n theta that means 2 pi i alpha 1 when alpha is rational and then 2 when alpha is irrational okay that would be a very interesting nice exercise it is also important that you study find out various sequences various sequences what kind of sequence the sequence will converge what kind of sequences the sequence may not converge so you should work out as i said in the beginning of my lectures it's interesting and it's important to work out as many exercises as possible if you want to understand the concepts otherwise the definitions may look difficult but once you understand the definition it will not be and it's also giving the definition in a very logical order okay with that we will go to now one of the our most important aspects with this thing so you have a complex uh, number system in that number system you have an algebraic concept which gives you addition multiplication then there is a geometrical concept that gives you the convergence of sequence numbers and with that convergence and uh, the geometrical concept so we have a nice system c which are two of these fundamental concepts as i said it's a potent weapon for applications we go to the most important aspects of the complex analysis namely the complex function theory so let's start with that now complex function theory and in fact that's the main aspect of your uh, study in these two modules so some aspects i will tell you and then you will see more of this in the second module okay all right so what is that next we want to do it so complex function theory i will give the examples i will give some properties and i will do what or all we want to do it here okay so what do you think so you have a function so they say uh, so you have to understand which is the variable which is the value so you have a domain omega so i may not define the function anyway. so you have a function so you have a so you ha have a complex plane c so you may have a domain here a domain has a very precise definition but you just think it as some region if you want a precise definition it's called an open connector set you may ask what is this openness and what is this connected but you don't think of all that do not worry about all this uh, very precise definition of openness and connectedness but you think that as you see that it's a region may be connected by a nice curve or something like that okay so you have a, a function complex so this is so you will have points here z and then it will be mapping to another complex plane and that plane i call it a omega plane if you want it this is also a complex plane so you have a complex plane and the image set is in another complex plane that means f is a mapping from omega to c that means a complex function i write it as w is equal to f of z so given a point z here there will be a point here which will be f of z so this is called the complex the so it's a complex this is the complex value this is complex variable variable and this is the complex value you should know which is complex value which is the thing so f is a complex valued so the f is a complex valued function of a complex variable complex variable okay so be clear about it okay 
So, that is the point view. So, you would have seen it lot of things. Okay. And one point you may come across later, which I want to explain to you. There is a, a, a concept of a single valued map. Single valued map. That means for all Z in omega, there is a unique f of z. Anyway, I am not going to give you a deeper things about it, but it is better to know this concept of single valued and multi valued. But uh, thing, for example, what are the examples in this case? Examples fz equal to z is a complex valued map, fz is equal to z square, and fz is equal to x itself I can call it where z is equal to x plus i y and all are single valued are single valued. But if I do f z equal to you already seen so let's sum. So, on the other hand, look at this example fz equal to z power half. This is nothing but the that is equal to square root of z. And we so far we have studied this is nothing but the solutions of z square equal to something. We are looking for the solutions, right? For uh, square root is something. If, uh, if, we, uh, if, uh, if, if omega is a, no, let me not use omega, if, uh, what notation I will use it, if w is equal to, is such that w square is equal to z, then you call it w is equal to square root of z, that is the definition. Okay. But you know that if w is a square root, then if w is a square root, if w is a square root, that implies minus w is also a square root, also a square root. Okay. This is nothing but the solutions of uh, w square equal to z. You see, so you are looking for solutions and that is what we have done it. So, you get two roots, two for z, there will be two roots, okay. these are called multi-valued, multi-valued maps, multi-valued maps. So, in that way you can define fz equal to z power 1 over n which we already studied it as a solution. That is what the solutions of z power n equal to z naught. So, this is n valued maps, multi valued means n nth roots. There are n nth roots. Okay. So, it is a there will be, so it is a very interesting theory which I do not want to do it here, but uh, I want to give you some other expression, but I want to, what I want to tell you is that for a z, there will be multi values, such things are called multi valued maps and uh, there are some deeper concepts regarding uh, things, but I do not, uh, I do not think I will get into that one. Uh, how do you map really? So, you cannot get the two maps together in C, right? When you have two maps in uh, that uh, that is not really you call it a function for a given value you do not want to see two values here. So, basically you need two copies and how do you merge the, these are all some deeper concept what are called uh, Riemann surfaces and other things, but let me skip all that. But 
the study of such multi-valued maps are also important. Here n roots are there and there are functions which infinitely many roots like log maps. Before going to understand more about these maps and the whole uh, complex analysis theory is to understand maps, various types of maps here. So let me start with uh, some important functions, example. So you have already seen it. So, so you have already seen e power i theta is equal to cos theta plus i sin theta. This is of course is not a uh, complex, this is a, a theta is real. So it is not really the uh, uh, complex variable map. It is a real variable but the complex value. And you also know e power x. And one of the important, so you are interested in studying e power z, okay, for a complex number. This is for x real. Here theta is real. And one of the important property, now I want to define e power z, okay. The main important e power z. And what is the important property of a complex uh, exponential function you have studied? The important property of a comp, uh, exponential function is its uh, product property. e power x plus y is equal to e power x into e power y. This is the most crucial property of exponential. So we want to keep this property. In other words, we want e power z plus w equal to e power z into e power w. Right. So this is what we want it really. So one of the natural definition which e power z you may prefer is that if I write e power z is equal to e power x plus i y and if I want this property say so a natural definition of e power z I want this to happen. Okay. This is what I want it, if possible, because we want to retain this important property of exponential. Okay. So the definition of e power z can be given as e power z x into cos x plus i sin y. That is one way to see the definitions you can do. That. But of course there is a, another way of defining exponential via its uh, series form. So what is e power x? Another definition if you want it. Both are same but uh, you have to verify both are same. What is e power x? Is equal to 1 plus x plus x square by 2 factorial. This is an infinite series and infinite series means you have to understand the convergence of the partial sums. So the same way of defining e power z is equal to e power z is equal to summation z power k by k factorial k equal to 0 to infinity. So if you if I want this to be converges what is the meaning of convergence here? Now you have studied the convergence. So this definition is meaningful due to the convergence which, which we have studied. So we are already using both algebra and the thing, uh, algebra and convergence. If you want to justify this one, so you have a sequence of partial sums, sequence of partial sums, okay. What is that sequence? I can define a sequence Zn summation Z power k by k factorial up to k equal to 0 to n. And if this, you can actually prove that, that is difficult, I do not want to do the computations here. If you want, you can, this is an exercise for you again. Show that Zn converges to some number Zn converges. Once sudden converges, I call that limit to be this one. So my definition 
again e power z is equal to limit of z n. You see that is the definition we can call it. So, there is a way of defining e power z in a natural way the definition of e power x is given. It is exactly like that. The only thing is that now you have to see the convergence and I have already given you the definition of convergence in the complex number system which you can use. Using that sequence you can show that this sequence converges. Okay, that involves some kind of work. If you would like to see it as an additional exercise, you take it as an exercise, additional exercise and try to show. All this requires some amount of uh, homework. You have to spend some time, understand something and uh, do the convergence. And it is not expected to teach everything in the, these two modules of functions. With that you have an, you can derive your familiar formulas. You can also define your familiar formulas of uh, all the functions and all kinds of things. Okay. So, let us use that one. Okay. Let us uh, property you first. So, let us compute what is e power i y. What is e power i y? By definition, by putting z equal to 0, x equal to 0 and i y. You will have this definition. So, that you will get it 1 plus i y plus i y whole square by 2 factorial plus i y whole cube by 3 factorial by this definition. If I do this and expand here, I am trying to prove your formula. This is a different definition, this is a different definition. From this definition, from this new definition, you can derive this formula. That is what I am trying to do. So, this is 1. Now, look at here. This is an imaginary number. Here you have i square which is minus 1. Okay. And then that will give you y square by 2 factorial. Okay. And then you will get i y. Here you have i y whole power 4 by 4 factorial. So, i power 4 is plus 1. So, you will have plus y power 4 by 4 factorial plus minus etc. And here then you have an i common here, you will have y here and 1 i square i cube will come, 1 i square will give you minus 1 and then 1 i will be there that will take it i cube by 3 factorial plus etc. And this is nothing but your cos y plus i times okay. So, you have your familiar formula for you and in particular if you have want to have it e power x plus i y is same as e power x, this is the formula you want it, okay, which also can be proved. So, that is same as e power x into cos y plus i. This is just to uh, demonstrate that uh, both formulas are the same. So, by expansion, you can get your formula here, okay. Another important property, okay, this is one. Another important property which I want to do here. So, what is modulus of e power y? This I already I told you. Modulus of e power y square is equal to cos square y plus sin square y that is equal to 1. Therefore, that implies modulus of e power i y is equal to 1 for all y, careful y real, okay. I have not defined e power i z yet, okay. But this is modulus if e power i y is equal to 1. So, this always lies on the unit circle, okay. e power i y will always lie on unit circle, 1. It will only be there. Therefore, e power z is equal modulus of e power z is equal to modulus of e power x into e power i y. That is equal to and e power x is a positive number. So, it will be here and modulus of e power y is equal to 1. So, e power x. So, modulus of e power z is same of e power x and e power x is not equal to 0. 
So that means modulus of e power z is not equal to 0. That implies e power z not equal to 0 for all z in C. That is a very good idea. Even this property you know it for the real, even for the complex numbers e power z can never be 0. Okay? Which is never 0 for that. Some more property, I will write it here itself. So, it is more easy to write it on the blackboard. What is the other property which I want to tell you? Now, what is its conjugate? I already know that if z is a thing, its conjugate is z bar that is equal to x minus i y, z equal to x plus i y. So, I want to know what is the conjugate of e power z. This is a complex number because the definition is here. Yeah. So, e power z is equal to e power x into cos x plus i sin y. You want to see its conjugate. And this is a real number. So, its conjugate is the same. So, you have to see this is e power x into cos x plus cos, no sorry, this is cos y. So, cos y minus i sin y. But that can be written as e power x into cos of minus y plus i of minus y. Okay. Cos y minus i. So, this is nothing but e power x into e power minus i y that is equal to e power x minus i y that is equal to e power z bar. That is a quick proof. So, e power z its conjugate is same as you take the conjugate do that. So, you have a very nice thing. With this you can define more general sin and cosine function. So, let us do that one. So, what is uh, uh, so we have e power i y is equal to cos y plus i sin y and e power minus i y is equal to cos of minus y which is cos y and plus i sin of minus y that is equal to minus sin y. So, you have this. This is what we have. So, if you add and uh, divide by 2, this immediately tells you your cos y is equal to e power i y plus e power minus i y by 2. If you subtract and you get sin y is equal to subtract it, then you get 2y here e power i y minus e power minus i y by 2y. So, do not forget this sign. This is very important. So, cos y is the average and the sin y there is an i here. So, do not miss that when you write your proofs. So, you can write your cos y. So, with this formula e power z is defined for all z. So, e power z is defined is defined for all z. Okay. That implies you can also define e power i z. What is e power i z? By this expansion. That is the definition. So, with this you can define what is called a circular functions or you can define. So, you uh, just recall now what you have studied in from your 10th. First you have defined your trigonometric functions cos and sin, tan, everything when y is between 0 to 2 pi. But then using the periodicity, you define cos, sin, etc. for all y real. Now, I am going to define your trigonometric functions even for the complex variable using this kind of similar argument. So, you have your cos z equal to e power i z plus e power minus i z by 2 and your sin z is equal to e power i z minus e power minus i z by 2 i. Once you have cos z and sin z, you can have your tan z and all your trigonometric things. 
okay so uh, you have uh, with that if you add the same philosophy now if you uh, add the same thing you exactly get your cos z is equal to not cos z you can also write your uh, e power i z so same formula is true now cos z plus i sin z here i want you to uh, i want you to be caution yourself in the sense that when i am defining e power i y is cos y plus i sin y where cos y is the real part sin y is the real part okay but when i write in this form this is not the real part or this is not the imaginary part because z involves x and i y so this also involves so this is not the real part and this is not the imaginary part. To get the real part and imaginary part, you have to substitute z is equal to x plus i y and you have to think z is equal to x minus i y. Expand it, collect the terms i, everything, separate it and then write down. So it is interesting to write the real. So as an exercise, write down the real and imaginary parts of this. Okay, so that's an exercise to end. Exercise. Where do I write the exercise? Write real and imaginary parts. Write real and imaginary parts. Okay. With this, I will stop this lecture. And in the next lecture, what I am going to do? The important properties of the function. Two important properties I am going to describe. One is the continuity of a function and then the differentiability of the function. With this, I will stop this lecture. Thank you.